Over the years, people have been captivated by many films and has captured their imaginations. During this documentary, we'll be discussing the differences between analog and digital film, and we'll be finding out which one comes on top. We will be covering many different topics, such as the viewing experience, the cost, the differences between the cameras, storage, filming experience and editing, and finally we will come to a conclusion. To start off with, we will be talking about the viewing experience. It's 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was the first real breakthrough. That was shot in the 70s, and I defy you to see the difference between that and a CGI shot film now. I can choose one particular analogy which I find really, I found really interesting. Um, I, I'm, I am myself kind of mildly verti vertiginous. I actually have problems in on heights. And I'm thinking about two films I've seen, one of which was um, Avatar, which seemingly is set on a clouds in our planet and with vast spaces below there. And I did not have the least sense of being in any kind of sense of danger. I then watched a film called Man on the Wire, which is a documentary, a low-budget documentary, shot recording someone who actually went from one of the Twin Towers to the other on a tightboat. I could scarcely watch it because it was that because the because there was no CGI, there was no special effects. I believed it, and it's only because the director, which is Kubrick, as you probably know, uh, took the trouble to innovate. He innovated on a in a, in a different way to CGI. Uh, he innovated by using matte screens and cutouts for every shot. He knocked you back in your seat. And I saw it on TV recently as well. And I was still completely, I remember how knocked out I was when I first saw that film. Well, when I was a child, it was in the war. It was very splendid in the foyers, where nowadays it looks very businesslike. It's not the same elaborate decor. Well, in those days, you only ate sweets or crisps. You never had meals or anything like that in the cinema. No, I think it was better then. I remember the first one I saw that we thought, oh, that's different, and that was Roger Rabbit, where they had a bull-sized rabbit talking to somebody. And, uh, but now you, you just take it for granted. I remember the first 3D Grandad and I went to see uh, in Montford uh, about 50 years ago. We had to wear special glasses and all that sort of thing. It never really caught on and you never saw anything like it. I think, I suppose there are now, because I don't go to the cinema a lot, but uh, in those days it was a goal. When I started going to cinema, you had the double bill, you had ice cream sold you between the film. So what you would do is you, you would sit in the cinema for three, three and a half hours, you would see a, 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 sh a long film and a short film, you might even see a newsreel or a cartoon as well, it would stop and start at various moments. People came and, came and went at any time. Now I hated that, but my parents would do that. They would take me onto a film and say, well we've seen that at this moment, we can go now. My worst experience of watching films was on something called Saturday morning cinema, which we used to be taken along to. So you, you, your, your parents would take you along to the cinema at about um, 11 o'clock. They would go away and do the shopping and you'd, they'd pick you up in two hours afterwards. And those are the most vaucous occasions. And every so often the manager would come out and say, if you children don't shut up, we we'll stop the film. <laughs> so no, at that level, I don't think there's, there's that difference. From a viewing point of view, celluloid up to a point, um, certainly because it is effectively an analog format rather than digital, the nature of the image is slightly different to a digital, digital picture. It's uh, only when you get up to the very high resolution digital pictures that I think they, they fully compete. The one difference, particularly from a viewing point of view, with celluloid, you can never completely get rid of the uh, picture judder that happens from the, 
the process of how it projects the film, whereas of course a digital film is uh, rock steady. I think a lot of the viewing public have become quite blasé about special effects and it's almost a victim of its own success in that you can't tell what's a, a genuine live effect and uh, what's a CGI version. Having said that, the, um, I know there, there is a school of thought that uh, tries to go back to normal uh, physical effects rather than computer generated. I think what we notice, or I notice, is that, that most filmmakers haven't yet even remotely touched on what digitalisation could do. Over the last two weeks I've seen two films. Uh, one was Far From Man in Cloud, which was shot on 35mm, but obviously I started projecting on dig digitally. I, I didn't actually like it as much as I liked the original. The following week I went to see Unfriended, which I found really interesting as a film, and it just showed what digital film can do. I think filmmaking has become, hasn't really even started thinking about what digital film can actually do, um, and I'm hoping that in the next 20 years um, that we will be seeing a lot of very different kind of filmmaking. Now that we understand a little more about how the viewing experiences have changed, let's move on to the cost. They're different. I think what I feel at the moment, if I can just say one thing in answer to that, I think what appears to be going on at the moment is you've got a, a real difference at one level between films that are becoming increasingly, increasingly expensive, the blockbuster film, whether it is whether it is a live action film or an animated film. I mean, I'm just staggered at the cost of animated films. It can be becoming increasingly difficult to get a 35 millimeter film because all the cinema is going over to digital. Yeah. It's an interesting question. And you might ask yourself, why, they did, why did they do that? Well, because it's easier. If you want to make a print of 35mm film, um, it's probably about 40 kilos of film. And it's an awful lot of film. It's exactly the same film that went through, through a 35mm camera. It's just longer. It costs thousands to make one of those prints. And if you think that you had, say, a James Bond movie premiering all over the country, there'd probably be a thousand prints made. It's an awful lot of money. Whereas if you use a hard drive, it costs 80 quid. And all you've got to do is program it and pay for the delivery. And you can also preload it, so you don't need as many. So it has obvious advantages for the distributor the process is simpler. I know in the multiplexes they don't even have a projectionist on duty. The people who sell the popcorn just press the button when the film is due to start. It's simple as that really. So there's obvious advantages. <coughs> and so it's becoming increasingly difficult to get 35mm prints of the films that I wanted. I was increasingly having to go and earn big borrow or steal DVDs and Blu-rays, uh, which is not a good quality of picture. So we made the big step of changing over completely overnight, mm. taking out the 35mm projector, sending it to a good home and putting in uh, an awful lot of sophisticated equipment to replace it. It's the cost of the film stock, but then you've obviously got all the other costs, in fact, involved of, in front of the camera costs, so I, I think it's, it, it, it's expensive. So I do know that when films were still being um, shown on celluloid in cinemas, that it cost a thousand pounds to make a print to send out. So say a film shown in 300 cinemas would cost 300,000 pounds to actually simply get to the cinemas. It, it was quite inhibiting, and if cinemas were not particularly successful, if they weren't getting huge audiences in, you know, a thousand pounds, you'd have to get quite a lot of people through the door before you start breaking even. So at that level, that's a, a real major difference. As, as I understand it, the kind of digital um, formats which send to cinemas only cost themselves, each one only costs about 30, 40 pounds. One of the things about celluloid is it deteriorates each time you send it to, to the projector. Digital formats don't deteriorate. So that, at that level, the cost, is, the cost difference is, is massive in terms of projection. As less and less films are made on celluloid, that cost will go up and up and up to a stage where it becomes prohibitive to actually film at all. After now learning 
what the differences are between the costs and how analog is a more expensive medium, we can now find out how both of the cameras actually work and the differences. An analog camera records photons of light that enter through the lens. The photons hit the frames and record whole images rather than data. The film is covered in an emulsion that contains silver halide crystals. These crystals react chemically when light hits them and turn them into silver metal. These pieces of metal are what gives the grain to the image. Digital cameras use electronic sensors that sit behind the lens. The sensor is made up of tiny little pixels that detect light accurately. The pixels record light and then turn them into electronic charges. The charges are then made into electronic data which give you the image. Now that we understand the key differences between how each camera operates, I decided to ask Nick Wheatley specifically what he thinks of the storage and any problems that he has experienced. Most celluloid film comes in a standard carry case, uh, which then contains within it um, the film cans that have each approximately 20 minute segment in them. You then have to check every, every um, reel to make sure that the person that previously broke it down has attached the right heads and tails to the, uh, each piece of film, because obviously you, you have to trust that they've uh, they've put the right film in the right box. Um, so you always have to check those to make sure um, because there's always at least one frame left on the header and the tail so you can match it up. Um, you then have to join it all together. Uh, depending on which way round it survived, you may have to then rewind it all. Digital um, normally will come on a um, slot in hard drive, SATA type drive, which you then uh, put onto the uh, into the server and you download it and it takes probably about half an hour to download. The main problems you tend to get with celluloid is that it could easily arrive damaged. Another one with celluloid is the obvious thing of the film actually snapping um, while you're showing it. It's uh, obviously in that situation Normally the projector would automatically switch itself off because there's sensors built into it to detect a breakage so that there's no fire risk. Um, which then means, as well as having to stop to, to do a temporary fix on the film, you also have to restart the lamp, which in most cinema projectors is an arc lamp and takes a few minutes to uh, restart. With digital, most of the problems you get are really outside your own control. There's the potential to have software issues. We do get regular updates, so we try and keep on top of everything. But you can have software problems with the actual uh, the software running the server, etc. Um, as far as the prints are concerned, you can certainly have the situation where you might, for whatever reason, have a corrupt disk that survived. After finding out more about the storage, I decided to ask two of the interviewees which overall they preferred. One form gives me more choice than the other on what film I can get and when I can get it. So there are obvious advantages because the delivery of the film has changed. The simply because of my age and my experience. As a film watcher, I still have a very strong preference for 35mm formats. If I have a choice going to a cinema, um, if I know there is a choice between 35mm projection and, and digital projection, I will go for 35mm projection. As a filmmaker, and in terms of being a sort of amateurish filmmaker, the there's no question that digital is much easier to use. It enables me to do things I couldn't use on, on that. So yeah, so at that level, I have a different, a different preference.
after spending a large amount of time with each of my interviewees and learning a bit about each different medium, I can thus decide that digital has come out on top. Celluloid still has a fine place in many people's hearts and I doubt it will ever disappear, but digital is definitely the superior medium and is just going to advance further and further as we venture into the future. Thank you for watching.